Good morning and welcome back to Rad BMX Builds. Today we are at Race Inc, which is also Box Components, Cook Brothers, and American Bike Company. So we are going to go inside. I'm going to give you an exclusive behind the scenes tour of Race Inc, what they're doing now, and what their plans are in the future. So let's go inside, meet Toby, Art, the guys, and see what's going on. try to increase my energy and I just can't. I just don't have it. In. Oh, there we go. I got a shameless plug. Perfect. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you for coming in. Oh, thanks. It's always coming. a pleasure, you know, chatting with you. I, it, 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 the one thing that, the, the cool thing that I've got going on over here, I get to touch everybody in the old and the new BMX community. Absolutely. So we've got a lot of different things going on right now. If you guys didn't know this, my name is Art Ornalis. I'm the general manager of American BMX Company. What that means is we own the properties, actually own the brands, um, Race Inc., Cook Brothers. We have the rides for Kuahara, which we just announced. We also have that ET collaborative bike that we launched and actually it's pretty much sold out. I'd be surprised if we could buy one online right now, which is pretty cool. But we also do BMX action also so there's a lot of different things that we've got going on over here a lot of cool projects a lot of new new things happening here and as our relationship has evolved sean i've been able to show you some stuff on what we've got coming out and i don't mind you know doing anything like that today i'll um i announced the other day that on my daughter's bike that i'm building i don't have it here because i got a few more tweaks i need to do do on it if she sees this i got louis vuitton seat coming in you know, and some stuff like that. So what bike is that? So, thanks for asking. The 26 inch pink pick. That's what I call it, the pink oh, pick. I like it. I'm a Porsche, Porsche enthusiast. Same. And there's there's a livery that, I guess that's the way you say it. So there's it a painting scheme on one of the Porsches, which I actually have. It's on. a heritage scheme, and I could probably put up a picture of it, but Ken Block is racing Pikes Peak with that livery right now. Yeah, there it is right there on my I'll screen. Show you. So that's the inspiration for it, right? Yeah. The color, it's a bubble gum pink. I have that bike too. Yeah. And tell me about your daughter's build. So it's very unique um, for her. I'm, I'm actually doing a lot of different things on, on the build. Um, pink being her favorite color. 
I'm also going to incorporate some other things that are dear to our family. And it's just really tailored to what she she likes and what she's all about. The benefits of being the general manager's daughter. <laughs> yes. Getting yes, a full yes. custom 26 inch. Yes, yes. You know, pink, I, call, pink. I call her a spoiled rich kid, although I don't <laughs> consider myself rich. Yeah. But, um, you know, but she is the first one to have something new out there. And I debuted these last week. Yeah. So if you haven't seen these, Sean, maybe you did. I think you do watch my videos. Um, I debuted Cook yes. Brothers Cranks. So yeah, bring, bring those in a little closer so they can see these. So if you could take a look at this, beautiful. They're really beautiful. If you notice the nice wows and all this, so this is um, updated version of what was back in the old days. We um, modern geometries, modern way of doing things. It's going to be a, a, a tougher, stiffer crank set all the way around. So they're beautiful. Mirror finish on. Yeah, gorgeous with the laser etched Cook Brothers on there, and you can see that it's reflecting a lot because of gorgeous chrome, but. Yeah. Just a beautiful crank. Okay. Um, one thing I teach people about every once in a while is they might not know this, but we are actually coming out with bikes, even though it's right there. Ugh, yeah, you're going to see something like this in a 26 and 29 inch version, both in chrome and white, coming out. So, with that being said, the moving on to Race Incorporated bikes that's really where we have everything right now and a thing that we have established well actually Toby established about 15 years ago was 20 millimeter dropouts and how appropriate how, how, check out that timing right there hi Toby hey. <laughs> so with all that being said Toby's here he's sitting right next to me in the office um, go ahead and take it from here Toby hi guys and girls I'm Toby Henderson the janitor of ABC no. <laughs> uh, I say janitor because I don't really have an official position here. I think I'm somewhat of a visionary guy and try to lead a great team to uh, to bring you know good bright products to the market. And uh, and the ABC thing's been kind of a, a something I want to do for a long time. As you guys probably know, I I found a box components uh, 11 years ago, and um, I, I didn't have a frame. I only had components, and I got involved with uh, my partner Mark Cote to bring out a frame. And I wanted to bring out a frame so I could take all my ideas of components and bring it over and grow those ideas. But as, as, as Art pointed out earlier, you know, um, I was the first guy to do 20 millimeter axles in the front of the BMX bike. And um, that was, I wanna say 16, 17 years ago. It, it took literally 10 years for the industry to adopt 20 millimeter front hub. Um, and that comes from my years of riding a bike. And BMX, in my opinion, hadn't really had a lot of focus put on evolution um, that I experienced as a mountain bike rider. So um, in about 2003, a couple years after I quit racing, I re retired in 98, maybe it was early 2000, I went on to a BMX track and I looked at the track I hadn't been there in years and people are clipped in, there's a blue goo around the corners and I looked at everybody and said, well, why are we running high bottom brackets, knobby tires, things like this? And I thought, well, that's pretty stupid. You know, let's go ahead and start to evolve the BMX bike, which just wasn't happening. Some of the bigger companies like Specialized track these guys, they tried to jump in and, and um, uh, didn't have much success in BMX. So I thought, well, how do I get involved? How do I make some money, you know, selling BMX stuff? And um, I started involved in BMX bikes and the components, and that was um, 22 years ago. This is my latest creation. I don't know if you guys can see that really close up or not. Yeah. So the idea of this tire is, like I said, I, I saw a blue groove on a BMX track. Why do we have big lug knobbies? There's no loose dirt anymore. So the idea of this tire is to, to accelerate down, down the straightaway, which is hard, and you get into a corner with minimal dirt, you get these really narrow knobbies to, uh, to grab some of that loose dirt. Um, these, these knobbies are ramped and they're hexagon shaped. So you get six points of um, engagement with the ramping, which makes the tire extremely fast. So, anyway, so I, I'm bringing that stuff over over to ABC, all these years of doing this stuff, um, and I'm now trying to do it for the retro guys, and, and that's kind of what we're, we're here for and what Sean's here for is to explain to the retro guys what ABC's up to, what racing is up to, and try to bring some of that racing experience technology over. But not only is the tires what we at Box call oversized technology, and we incorporated that into racing and Botima and Cook Brothers forward thinking, um, and the way I see it is this, I can always put a 20 millimeter axle in a fork and I can always space it down to 10. 
right? And like, ah, oh, the spacer or whatever. But at the point when you want a 20 millimeter axle, you don't need to go buy a fork. You can go buy a hub and a wheel and put it inside that fork. And when you ride a 20 millimeter axle and hub in a fork, it's a completely different bike. But it's been years for me to convince the world that that's the way to go. And if you look at Nick Keeman, current world champ, current gold medalist, um, he's running 35 millimeter spindle, and he's running 20 millimeter up front, 15 millimeter in the rear. And he won those two events just this last year, right? Best rider in the world we have today. So what we decided to do, so the whole line, even though we are making race bikes and retro bikes at the same time, we decided to go up, go up a step, which we didn't see in retro at all, right? and go to technology and bring technology to retro. But now we have Sean here and I'm trying to get, you know, <laughs> him to, uh, to follow the lead and, and, and experience the same thing. So anyway, um, that's kind of what ABC and Race Inc and all these we're doing to, are trying to afford. One of the things is when you go to make things, and I think you guys already saw this, right? Yeah. Sometimes when you go to make something like this, and I want to bring oversized technology to it, I could build an anchor. So there's times when we give up on that and say, okay, you know, for a chromoly crank and a chromoly spindle, 19 millimeters is good enough. This is going to be stiff. It's going to be a little heavy anyway. But if I were to take that and try to make a 35 millimeter spindle on it, it's just not retro enough. So yeah. there's a fine line we have to we have to decide on what we want to do. And and we know there's a retro crowd who really likes the look, which this was all about the look. Yeah, 100%. See that? And uh, we're really proud of that. We just got those, and and we'll probably have them in the building in the next 90 days or something like that. Um, I think in the look department, you're absolutely nailing it. These retro racing bikes look visually, aesthetically, like the old school racing bikes with the twist of the new modern stuff like the V-brakes and the larger dropouts. But the overall aesthetic look, when you first glance, and I, I own a few of these now, uh, proudly, and I absolutely love them. When I post them on my Instagram, people even ask me, is that an old race ink bike without right. them really looking at the photo or knowing right. the differences? Right. Right. But they look that similar, right. but they perform like a modern race bike. Right. I, I kind of have to give some credit to the rest of the team too, because that's not my world. I'm, I'm a race guy and I put big graphics on things and stuff like that. And, <laughs> and I learned that I have to kind of like sometimes just sit back and let, let some of that old school stuff come into play. Even. Out of your race ink retro bikes, which one's doing the best in sales? What size? That's been a big call because I am kind of trying to guide purchasing a little bit. 60, 40, yeah. So 60% of the bikes are 29, 40% of the bikes are, are 26. Anyway, wow. so I'm a 29 guy. I have a son who's 5'11", and he's he's 17 years old. He's a 29 guy. Okay. And I have my wife, she's 26, right? It's all preference, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Or, or trendiness because their friend has a right. whatever, so they right. buy it. Right, right. So a lot of people that ride are very casual. They're not as in tune as you are with right. your background in racing and geometry. Right. Uh, a lot of people, it's purely the looks, right. and it doesn't matter what size in racing that you get, they all have the same amazing look, it's just what bike do you want. But the trends, to me, in my side of the camera, seems to be in the 29 to 26 world. Right. And I, I've owned a 24, 26, and, no, I'm sorry, I've owned a 24 and 226 yeah. racing bikes. I haven't owned a 29 yet. Okay. But. Um, they're just great, and they, they do feel different when you ride them. They look similar when you look at them, but right. they are different bikes. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. You know, we, we were saying we could have done, we could have gone with bigger tubes on the bike, but we would have lost some of that retro look. I think yeah. we could have made the bike stiffer. But I think if we went all in from the very beginning to the retro guys with a bike that had all the technology and got away from the look, we, I think we're better off doing baby steps. Yeah. You know, and, and, and someday down the road when We'll probably see a bike with some bigger tubes that are a little bit stiffer in the retro world as they start to accept them. Um, I'm seeing some stuff being accepted in the retro world, like gears. Yeah. You know that a few years ago, you no way you talk to guys putting gears Absolutely on the bike. Not. And I went to the Bob Harrow ride last Saturday, and there was a lot of geared bikes there. Yeah. A lot of them. Um, bikes that uh, disc brakes. Yeah, disc brakes. That's that's pretty much kind of accepted, but that's a perfect example of it. Yeah. Um, I think it's still baby steps, but I was riding next to Mike Buff. Um, he had a geared bike. With disc brakes. Yeah, with disc brakes. And we went to climb a hill and he got to shift down and I didn't. We were able to acquire racing and, and own it outright. You know, we did it for racing and race bikes because that's, you know, my background and Mark's background as well. 
and we realized we had this retro name that people would want. Yeah, and, totally. and at the time, we thought, let's grab some of this market share. It's been phenomenal out there. So we decided to put a lot of effort into the retro stuff, which we did. And I think, like you said, we did a good job. We killed you it. know, our bikes are a little more expensive than everybody else's, but that goes back to the specifications on, on, on the equipment, like redline cranks and seal bearings and things like that. And putting a B52, what is a box item, into a frame, and put a bottom bracket that screws these massive bearings into a frame and getting everything squared up and working, it, it, it's it's a couple years worth of work. So the B52 oh. is basically like an American bottom bracket size, is that right? But it's threaded like a Euro bottom bracket? Yeah, exactly what it is. So okay. it's B, uh, 52 millimeters is the size of an American bottom bracket, 51 point something. So 52 millimeters is the size of that bottom bracket on the in, uh, inner diameter. Then we thread it just like a Euro bottom bracket, right? I love it. But we also make it 86.5 wide allow us to put the bearings inside the housing and not have the bearings what's called outboard right um so the bearings are inside and allowing a 35 millimeter spindle so if i want a 35 millimeter spindle through the frame and have the thing not to squeak and look right yeah it's a b52 a lot of people don't understand what a 35 millimeter spindle is. It's like the size of a crank. It is huge. Yeah, do we have one? I, I'll bring one in. They, they are just so much bigger than like your standard red line crank set. It's 19, 19 millimeter. Yeah. So think about that. You're almost doubling. <laughs> it's massive. Doubling the size, yeah. Almost and what doubling. is the benefit of that? I mean, obviously it's probably strength and flexibility, right? right? Well, it's, it's power transfer. Okay. So when you push down on the crank and you pull on the handlebar, there's flex. Um, Good Lord, that's yeah. huge. Actually, is this? Yeah, this is 35 millimeter. So you can kind of see that it's the size of that. You can put my fingers in there, right? It's so it's, it's just a massive crank arm, or massive spindle, I should say, right? It's aluminum. Now, that's the funny thing is, is if you look at the, uh, the um, let's do some comparison. So here's the 19 mil. Oh, there you go. Here's the 19 mil, right? Wow. And here's the 35. You have to make this out of chromoly. And this weighs three times that axle. Oh, right, because it's aluminum. Heavier. Right, right. It actually material. means lighter, right? So the, the oversized, the bigger you go, the, the thinner material can be, right? And to take, but to do so, you need a special frame, and this is why I got involved. And with S, our Racing Inc. and ABC was to be able to crank this stuff using a frame. So what other stuff do you have for your bikes for the retro world that uh, people are wanting, needing, or you're maybe talking about, like? You got these. I just talked about these a little bit yeah, on, on so, the video, and I don't think I did a, I did you much justice in the explanation of them. I, I explained how to put them on, right. what they're for, and what the purpose right. is. But well, um, there's a lot of guys who can't get their hands on 20 millimeter hubs, right. right? Or even 15 millimeter hubs. So this is kind of a stop for that. So if okay. you really can't get your hands on a 20 millimeter hub, or you don't like the choices that are out there, you can put this on your bike. Fill up the 20 millimeter hole in the back and continue with your 10 millimeter hose without any gadgetry that's going on out there. So it's it's basically to fill a void that for people who can't find the aftermarket parts, which we're developing, and I'm working on that stuff right now. We just just don't have it, right? Yeah. So this is to to for the guys who are struggling with um, with the 20 millimeter holes, okay. what that's for, and we're calling it the armor plate. So a lot of the new things you have coming out are Cook Brothers products like right. seat post clamp stems, seat posts, right, um, things like that, the cranks. And we also doing some exotic material stuff. So we have some uh, titanium seat posts and some titanium handlebars coming. So the new Cook Brothers Racing is an homage to the old crank, but definitely superior in quality, it seems to be. And I think everyone's just gonna jump on board with these because these have the look of the old ones, but the availability that the old ones you don't have, and now you're gonna be able to get these. So you're gonna have to be quick to get them because I'm sure they're gonna sell out and I'm telling you by holding it in my hand, the quality is absolutely amazing. So uh, stand by for these. We're gonna talk a little bit about where you're gonna be able to get them when they're available, but I can tell you by holding it and talking to Toby about it that this is something you're gonna want. So we'll, we'll talk about how to get it in a little bit. Toby, if you could tell us a little bit about um, the brands under this one roof. Yeah, so we're American BMX uh, company, right? ABC is for short. Um, um, we have, uh, Obviously, Racing, Cook Brothers, Bo Team, I'm gonna probably forget one. Uh, we have a license agreement with Kuahara. We have a license agreement with Tongue. We obviously have bicycle motocross action. We brought THE back in. Um, I think I'm missing somebody. No, I think I got them all. 
-hmm. Racing, Cook Brothers, Botima, Kuohara, Tongi, THE, and Bicycle Motocross Action, right? These all have products in, in, in the works or if not online at abmxc.com, bmxaction.org. Please go over there and become a Patreon member if you guys are excited about what we're doing there. We are sharing um, uh, the Bicycle Motocross Action magazine has been digitized and we share those once a month in chronological order. I think we're on month two or three now. Um, so come over and check that out. If you can help us with the nonprofit, that'd be great. Come check us out and thanks for having Sean over here to visit us. It's been awesome. Okay, so that was a little tour of Race Inc. with Toby and Art and a little bit of behind the scenes of what goes on there, but I didn't leave empty handed. I was sent home with an awesome, awesome set of cranks, Cook Brothers cranks to be exact, which are extremely hard to come by, but they're making the Repop cranks like we talked about earlier. And I'm gonna show you the set that I got, so let's take a look. These are the three-piece chrome Cook Brothers 175 length cranks, 19 millimeter spindle. These things are amazing and they're going to go on to the pink 26 inch race ink bike that I got. So super excited about those cranks. Thank you again, Toby. Thank you again, Art. I can't wait to put them on the bike. So. I hope you like this video and make sure if you want some merch like I have here on my head and on my, my shirt, radbmxbuilds.com. And if you need any parts for your bike, go to my Amazon store and check that out. So if you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button, help support this page and keep us going forward. But as always, stay rad.